we're back with another question off the internet. This one, we got one from a mystery person in Seattle, Washington. He reads, I just watched your video on multi-driver headphones and was wondering if a coaxial design would be practical and desirable. I know that these are typically used with dynamic drivers and more recently with AMTs, so using planar magnetic tech would also provide another challenge to the design. Yeah, I could kind of see how you might come up with that idea, what the appeal might be. Yeah. But uh, we did actually put a little bit of thought into this at one point. So we have a vague understanding. And it's a little bit more complicated. We actually thought about something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> well, it was the early There's day. a time or two oh. we think about things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. back in the day. Yeah, 20, 30 years ago, I think. Yeah. Mm. So we'll cover the, the whole summary. What is a coaxial design? Yeah, start at the beginning. Traditionally, now this is a while ago, you used to see commonly in cars a tweeter on the inside centered on like a sub-base mid-range type driver. So you would have two drivers and one physical element. It looked like one speaker, but there's a little tweeter in the middle. Basically a woofer and a tweeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, taped All together, one. right? Compact. It was more convenient. So when you're slamming these in a car, you put one driver in, bam, there's two drivers in it. Well, we're on a normal speaker. There's like a dust, they call it a dust cover, a dust mm -hmm. cap, but in the center in the center of it, which covers the, you know, the magnet below. Yep. And on, on those, they would remove, there would be no dust cap. There would be actually a tweeter mounted to that center pole piece right in the middle of the woofer cone. So, yeah, it's like a two-way design, and they would put like a simple capacitor on the tweeter to act as a crossover. Right. So it was like a, basically a two-way speaker in one, one. They call it a coaxial. Hmm. It's a basic design to give you two drivers in one element and really just seems mostly for convenience of packaging um, and so that you have... Uh, the tweeter and the mid-range or the, the sub-base woofer in the same physical location for coherency. But commonly, you only really saw them on lower-end, more cost-efficient applications. Some speakers used well, them. Well, in car audio, that was a big step up to put. Yeah. Well, you went from, like, wizard cones yeah. to, which, ooh, actual tweeters. Which people probably don't even know what wizard cones are. Yeah, you I could know. cover that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just a little piece of material. That's a little cone <laughs> stuck out the middle instead of, again, yeah. where the dust cap would be. That's yeah. a common trend. It yeah. supposedly did highs a little bit. would resonate it the highs. the driver kind of, sort of, I guess it was highs. kind of like putting a small driver in the middle of a big driver, even though it was the same driver. Sort of. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anyone ever actually, that was measurable. I have no idea. I, I've never, that was well, back Nobody in the does day. it anymore. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. I don't think it was too effective. There's a lot of weird designs in the early days, but you don't see a lot of that now. Most cars now, they don't even use coaxial designs. They've been moving away from that because... For the most part, people want audio that isn't garbage, so they have actually pretty decent designs. And they put like a, two yeah. million drivers yeah, in the car just add more. all over the place. Yeah. Not to say that a coaxial design is garbage. It's just traditionally the way they're implemented, it's cheap, so yeah. they're not They good. were cheap speakers. Yeah. Hell, I right. think you get a set of six by nines for the back deck of your car for about 30 bucks back in the day, 40 bucks. Yeah, you still probably even can. less. They're very <laughs> affordable. <laughs> they were really cheap. Uh, this does remind me of uh, my, my speakers in the little dust cap. They were actually making noises because they were made out of like a soft rubber. So when you're playing them really hard, they would actually resonate. And you could yeah, they it. would crinkle, wouldn't they? Yeah, that was like it was like a really soft rubber oh, yeah. dome in the middle. Yeah, and yeah, if you're really beating them you up, you have so much air pressure yeah. that, the, that it would collapse. Just, the center uh, dust cap would collapse. Yeah, you so, wouldn't think yeah. that'd I be a problem. Them. Oh yeah, so stiffen them up. Yeah, yeah. Well, now they don't do that anymore. Yeah, mm. but I mean they're like 35 years old. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them are just made of the same material as the cone. And they just glued it, glued yeah. it, this little round dome thing right in the middle and glued it on. A lot of times the glue would let go. Anyway, we're going way off yeah. topic. We're supposed to yeah. answer the question. <laughs> so basically a coaxial design on a planar magnetic. That's tricky. The reason why coaxials were done on conventional drivers is pretty much because of convenience. That spot was almost dead. It was available. That center was not contributing a great deal. Yeah. Uh, you take the little cone off, you pop a hole right through the magnet assembly, which is typically more or less dead too. And for a very little disadvantage, you could put a whole new driver in this assembly. But with a planar magnetic, that's not the case. That center of the driver is very important. Yeah, you can't Putting just pop a hole, hole in it. it it's mm. tough. Yeah, it doesn't work. Well, even if you didn't, uh, you know, you'd still be blocking the center of the driver, even yeah. if you had just a structure in front of it and didn't pop a hole in it. Right. Not only that, I don't think I'd want a tweeter facing the center of my ear 
directly. You know, yeah, just and a headphone. Aiming right at your freaking ear. Probably not great. Yeah, that would probably kind of make it more difficult to integrate with the uh, with the with the planer driver. You know. Well, that's the other thing I was just thinking. Yeah, in the way twelve sixty six well and Diane is, it, we would have to be behind the driver actually. We we'd yeah. have to redesign the whole thing to actually do it. Yeah, right. You couldn't put it in front of it. No, so. there's no good way. It's very impractical. Yeah. And the advantages, especially in a headphone, don't quite seem to be there. Because like most things, the reason why coaxials were designed and used, they were just problem solvers. And here the problem kind of doesn't exist. Uh, if anything, what you really need in some planar magnetic designs is something to produce more low frequencies, not really high. Highs are usually mostly doable in a planar magnetic, and you could get pretty much the entire range of frequency out of, out of one driver. Uh, and most people would agree one driver is better than having several because you don't have any of the coherency issues between the different units. You don't have a crossover to deal with. And especially in a confined environment like a headphone, uh, it really avoids a lot of the problems with multi-driver designs. Anyway, we did a video on uh, multi-driver headphones uh, not too long ago, maybe a few weeks ago. And uh, we get we kind of covered that reason why we don't even like multiple drivers because they're hard to get to blend together to sound like one speaker you know well so. i mean if you can get full range out of one driver right yeah beyond right. beyond beyond audibility at yeah. that point too why why bother adding something but there might be some options like how about we put a super tweeter in there? Mm, super tweeter yeah, yeah. like the, some of these guys sell uh, separate super tweeters you put on your speaker and you hook it up to your standard speaker terms, and it just does like 15 kilohertz and up. Yeah, you know. No, JBL does that in their their high their like hi-fi speakers. Yeah, they put like tiny little super tweeters on the top. Yeah, remember we listened to them at a dealer that one time. Yeah, he's like, is this doing anything? It just like a little sizzle like coming out. out. Yeah, I couldn't hear anything. Add a little sizzle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Some people like that. Yeah. Put a little volume knob on it and tune it to your taste. You well, definitely need to be able to adjust it because it's a got super a, tweeter. It's, yeah, it's got knob. a super. Yeah, it's got to adjust for. I mean, we could tune it obviously for the headphone, but again, you know, to what end? Like, first of all, I think a lot of people can't even hear about 15 kilohertz. Although they're saying that even though you can't, there's some effect in the ultrasonic range where your brain is kind of picking it up. But who the hell knows? Mm. You couldn't go. You couldn't. Let's just say you couldn't go to the ear doctor and he's going to play you know 18 kilohertz and and you're gonna pick you know whatever you do raise your hand when you hear the tone or something i think mean, most people aren't gonna hear that high one no once you go past about 30s or 40s you're pretty much yeah, done with that no range hope. but they for some reason some people say oh, there is some effect in the in even in the ultrasonic above 20 kilohertz range but who the hell knows i never experimented with that yeah now another idea is what about a subwoofer for a headphone external he subwoofer? doesn't say it has to be a tweeter yeah. he just said coaxial yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it could be a subwoofer with a planar driver. Put a sub behind the planar driver. <laughs> yeah. Really, put, yeah, really pumping big. some air. Yeah. That's tough. Because, yeah, yeah. of course, low frequencies tends to mean a lot of physical air motion. Yeah. And you well, a lot of surface area. It sounds dangerous for your hearing, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I don't know how you would actually implement that. But you'd have to do, like, a stack driver design and have two separate elements that are better for different frequency ranges. And that's yeah. Trouble. I don't even know what you would make it out of. Come to think of it, you'd have to do mm. that uh, bone conduction thing, or you know, or vibrating mm. your. Uh, that is a thing. Body. They do make those, yeah. like for wearing headphones, yeah. like vibrate. So I it think one of our, like I think someone in one of the thread. Uh, yeah, I've asked seen it somewhere. Question. Yeah, might have been in one of the comments in one of our videos, but yeah. Yeah, I think somebody was looking. What for What do they do uh, with that? How they're do you just like vests oh. that vibrate. Yeah, yeah. It's like so a heavy vest. No, they're not heavy. I don't even know. I don't know what they use, but they vibrate somehow. I don't know. Hmm. It's like a tactile vest. Yeah, so it's shaking your bone, your body. That's exciting, I guess. It's kind of like the, they sell those for like home theater. You like put them on underneath your couch. You can call that a coaxial design. <laughs> External. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. I think coaxial no. means something's in the middle of something yeah. else, yeah. and there's a there's and they're round things. It's an external coaxial. <laughs> yeah, no, that like doesn't that. make any yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, they sell butt kickers for your chairs too. Yeah, you know? yeah, butt mm. kickers. That's what they're you know, called. Solenoid things you mount yeah. to your chair, and just the joint. Like, yeah. They just oh, they're just made to. Ta for tactile feel only, like you yeah. know, five hertz. You could do five hertz, yeah. 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 Or better yet, what was that subwoofer they made that was like a fan? Oh, the fan. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a big. That went down like the one blades hertz. adjusted pitch that make yeah. a frequency. I saw a few people That's making DIY thing. versions of those. Oh, yeah. yeah. The reliability seems to be questionable. Oh my god! That's right yeah. here. Was it <laughs> yeah, three horsepower motor to do this? Yeah, yeah. three five horsepower. <laughs> so pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's significant. I don't know if they made those for like. 
I don't think they ever made home it for theater. home. I think it was like commercial. <laughs> Not home theater, like, just theater theater. Yeah, I think high it was made end for, theater. Yeah, well, it's kind it of big. Theaters. Takes a fair bit of power. Always has to be running whenever you want. Low frequencies available. What a crazy concept. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, the fans. It's a variable. Can reproduce audio. Impeller well, pitch. It's pushing air. Fan blade. It's pushing air. Yeah. Lots. Yeah. Well, that's how you make three hertz, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't want that in my head though. Oh no! no some giant, not some blade spinning at so many RPM. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Probably not. No. no. Maybe on the top of your head, you get mm -hmm. one of those propeller hats and just put tubes down. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it doesn't seem very safe for your hearing. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. No, none of this is really no, a good idea. No, no. If, you, if you really want bass that badly, then maybe hang out where the earthquakes happen. Gets earthquake. You know, what is that? Point two hertz or so? A few two tenths of a hertz? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess it's it not high. Yeah. No, it's pretty low. Whatever it is. Well, the yeah. college here, UB at University of Buffalo, they have a earthquake simulator. Mm -hmm. Used to go there. Didn't, didn't the whole place shake when they ran that freaking thing? It was underground, well, right? Yeah, it's like a big the, table. It wasn't intended to shake the whole no, place. No, it wasn't, but I mean, you felt it. In <laughs> yeah, other yeah. buildings, right? Sure. It, yeah. Well, yeah. they built like a house on it and then shook They would the build house. an so actual like house, house shaking in the so distance. It's a platform that vibrated. They would the house to destruction to test building methods. Did you ever see it work? No. Just saw a video of it. It always happened when I had like labs and stuff. Yeah. I never did. I, would, I went there two years ago. I never saw it either. Yeah. But yeah, you felt it. Hmm. They would do like one every semester. Yeah. Build a house on it and shake it apart. Can you imagine what it takes to shake a house? I mean, artificially. <laughs> well, I mean, what the hell is this thing? What the hell runs this thing? I have no Jesus. idea. A lot of power. Stuff? I don't well, know. Well, they do have a nuclear reactor, too. That's true. They, yeah, just for playing around. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, not really playing who around. Is that though? thing active? They got the stack there, like the smoke stack, whatever yeah, they call the it, the steam stack. stack right? yeah. Steam stack. Okay, the yeah. Cooling the, tower. On the cooling tower. Cooling tower. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I don't think that thing actually is operational. I think it was made for like just teaching how to use one. <laughs> I think so. Yes. But back to coaxial design. <laughs> yeah. Back to coaxial magnetic design. headphones. Yeah. Right. Right. I think probably the closest actual implementation of this would be the Meza Empyrean, because they yeah. kind of sort of did that. It's like a two element approach on the same diaphragm. It's. Yeah vaguely coaxial sort of yeah yeah well they just decided they were two different they made different regions they varied the trace pattern on two different regions right yeah. so that supposedly one section's better at certain freaks than others well and they got different magnet structures too oh do they well yeah one's like circular and the top one's like yeah. curved bars yeah yeah usually there's a reason why people don't do, do things you know a lot of times there's either a workaround or there's some practical limitation to the thing where the implementation in some sort of weird, obscure manner isn't really advantageous. So it really depends on your approach. But sure. for the most part, it seems like most companies have found a way to get all the frequencies they need out of one driver. And that seems to be better. Yeah. You know, I'm, people have experimented with wacky things over the years. And coaxial and a planer, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. No. The, Disadvantages are substantial. Yeah. Mounting and tensioning the diaphragm would be very, that. very difficult if you had like a hole in the middle or you had to somehow put two separate discrete elements. Very difficult. Yeah. And it would significantly actually, it would limit your driver's ability to produce low frequencies intrinsically because you're limiting the surface area. And it would make it harder to uh, increase the excursion if you're tensioning it on the center and the outside. So no, it poses practical There's no way to grab a planer in the middle in any, in any way and, and have it operate. It's just not made for that. In fact, the center of the planer, the center area of the planer, is actually where most of the air mo moves, most of the motion occurs. Mm -hmm. It's the most critical what's, spot. What's, it's creating the base. You know? So as yeah. soon as you pin that down, you're done. You're, you're, It'd be you're, real you're, tough. You're below a few hundred hertz, it'll go away. <laughs> yep. So now you do need that subwoofer if you're going to add mm, a right. to <laughs> So now you need to add you a subwoofer. you got mids and highs. Now you need a three-way design. Yeah. 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 Now, now we're getting complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you, need complicated. A, you need a stacked yeah. diaphragm. You have your coaxial, and behind it or something, you'd have to put a full-size subwoofer element. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And we might as well triamp this thing. We need special yeah, amplification yeah. in every driver. Oh, that way we man. could run DSP. Mm -hmm. You could have just digital tuning of each driver and the frequency response. Separate there. XLRs for each one. Yeah. Three yeah. XLRs See, coming out. What yeah. I'm thinking is yeah. DSP right out the gate is a better bet. Just do one driver and just DSP yeah, and tear you test. Ah. Yeah, if you get, yeah, Let's if just stick with yeah, that. If you, yeah, if it's that difficult to get, yeah. get, get sound out of this bad boy, you yeah. Know, yeah, maybe you should just go with that. That makes a bit more sense, yeah. I think. Totally. Yeah. On that note... Hmm. Yeah. So that's why you don't see coaxial designs in yeah. planar magnetic headphones. Right.
Well then, yes. if anyone out there has any questions like this that they want us to answer on a future episode, you could send it to us at TOTL at abyssiphones.com and maybe we'll answer it on a future episode. Yeah. And, and don't forget, we have an abyssstore.com where you can get T-shirts. And yeah, abyssstore.com. I don't know if it's got hats, T-shirts, pillows. No, no hats. pillows yeah. to throw on your couch with a fun smiley face guy, mugs. Yeah. Mugs, yeah. Shirts. Yeah. We haven't mentioned that in a while. We should throw a mug on the table. We can do it today. Yeah. No, I just saw it. Anyway, yeah. So, abyssstore.com. Abyssstore.com. Yeah, and uh, thank you, everyone. Take care of yourself. <laughs>